right. Welcome everyone. I'm Bethany. So nice to meet you all. Um, I work with Singer. I'm an education specialist and I am here today with Ashley. Hello. I um, do a lot of marketing for Singer. Yes. So all things marketing. We're really excited to have her here today. She is like the upcycle queen of pro sewing projects. So she's going to be bringing us some really cool, fun tips and show us some projects she's done um, with upcycling. And we're kind mm -hmm. of doing that today with our flamingo costume. Yeah. So if you don't know what we're doing today, we are making a flamingo costume, which is right here behind us. Um, it is on an apron. So we took something that was already established and we're built off of that to make this flamingo costume. So um, we're kind of upcycling an apron, you know? Yeah. Um, but you should have your instructions in front of you. If you don't already, be sure you get them, get a pen, take some notes. Even if you're not sewing along with us today, take some good notes um, so that when you do get to make this on your own time and if this is recorded, so you can play it back later um, and you'll be able to do that, um, have some good notes there. Um, if you are sewing along with us, we do have some prep instructions in there. So I hope that you have got those completed and you're ready to sew along. Um, I do want to quickly mention we have two people helping us in the background besides Ash. Um, we have um, Amy. She's going to be, she's here in the studio with us. She's going to be helping answer any questions related to any of the materials and supplies, especially our Sanger products. Um, she'll be dropping links or answering questions about what we're using. And then Sonny is going to be in the chat as well. And she's going to be your go-to for answering any sewing related questions. And if it's something that we need to repeat, either of those ladies will be letting us know and we'll cover that again, but we're really excited to have you here. This is our third class this month. So if this is your first one with us this month, you need to go back and watch the last two. Um, last week, we made these little fun felt masks for kids. They're super cute. And the week before, we made our shirts that we're wearing, our little applique ghost shirts. So we've done a lot of really fun Halloween spooky season themed projects. And this is the last one for the month. So be sure you go back and watch those other ones if you haven't seen them yet. They're over on Michael's YouTube channel. And this is the last one for this month. And we're going to make a flamingo costume. I'm so ready. All right. So I feel <laughs> like this costume is like perfect for like last minute. Agreed. Like, where would you wear? Like, I feel like this would be a great office costume. Agreed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. The office, yeah. especially uh, Bethany and I were talking before, people meeting. Yes. You don't want to go just as a flamingo. You can always pop it off. Yeah, um, I really like to cook. I don't know that I could cook in the super fun apron, but I could definitely host in it. Yes. So it would be really fun hosting. I don't know you want feathers in the food, but hosting <laughs> for sure when the guests yep. arrive, this mm -hmm. would be a quick change. I also want to mention that the apron that we got is from Michael's, but it's the adult size, but they do make kid size aprons. So you could make a mini version of this for a child. Um, mommy and me kind of right. matching. I think that would be super cute. And then they can still like be a fun flamingo, but like be able to move around and right. it won't get too hot. Right. I can wear a jacket under it when it's cold exactly. and when they're trick-or-treating. Yep. They could also wear this to school. <laughs> like you want your child to dress up for school, but you don't want their costume to get filthy on the yep. playground. Like this is easy to take off before recess. So, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things are why we wanted to do kind of an upcycle project, last minute, quick Halloween costume. So let's get started. Yeah, get ready? Yes. Yeah, so Ash, we're going to go to the overhead camera real quick. And Ashley is going to show us all the materials that we and supplies that we need. Yeah. So the first thing we've already mentioned is an apron. We got this one from Michaels. I love that it came in the pink. It was like perfect. I mean, we're obsessed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like uh, we mentioned before, this also comes in kid sizes. So feel free to get your little ones an apron as well. And they have lots of colors. Yeah. yeah. But if you are doing something different than a flamingo with this project, you want to make a different type of character, like you can get a plain canvas one and paint it or dye, dye it. it. Yeah. So that's always nice. Like yeah. options are endless with this. So agreed. Agreed. We have our flamingo neck here, a feather boa. It's going to be a feather frenzy here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you will need a colored thread and a bobbin. Ideally, these colors would match your apron. You'll need a tape measure. We mostly use this to measure the space in between our gathers and ruffles as well. You know, marking pen. A Sharpie is not optional, but it saved us a lot of time. And yeah. um, we typically use this just to trace over the flamingo head. So a must have for us. Um, we'll need some clips and pens as well. We'll be using both. We think, um, I think they're necessary, especially yeah. if we're talking about saving time. It's a lot faster to clip. These pieces. clips came in handy when pinning the feather boa. Yeah, for sure. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> 
um, good old fashioned pair of sewing scissors as well that are fabric friendly. And um, we actually use three different schools of tool here. We saved the last one for you all. We did three different colors. You'll see here in a minute, make sure you need one. So you'll need this as well. Next, you'll need a ruffled ribbon. I know Bethany was super excited to find I this I love one. <laughs> my ruffled ribbons. We've used these in previous projects mm -hmm. here with Michaels and Singer um, in different colors, and they do yeah. come in a lot of colors at Michaels. We love it. All right. Um, next, we actually use four different types of fleece. Here, you only see three. I know Bethany's favorite is this really pretty glitter. The glitter. <laughs> I mean, I love that. So Michaels does carry felt in like large packs with a variety of colors, yeah. but they also sell them by the sheet. So you can really pick out exactly what colors you want for your project. Right, right. You don't have to skip on your dreams, people. <laughs> um, <laughs> next, uh, and lastly, we have a basting adhesive spray. We'll go yeah. into this a little bit later, but this is also a really good time-saving essential. And we used that one last week when we were working with felt as well, mm -hmm. so that came in handy. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's start with putting our apron together. And we'll go back to that main camera, Ash, real quick. I'm gonna show everybody what we've done so far. So here's our apron, and we're gonna be working off of this one. But as you see, I've already done a lot of the skirt um, because this does take a little time and we only have a little bit of time with you today. We're gonna to add an, the last row of ruffled tool here. Um, so in order for us to um, get all of this done today, I went ahead and did a few ahead of time, but I wanted to just show you quickly how I did this and how I, I, I recommend starting from the bottom and working your way up. That's literally how we're going to approach this whole project, starting here, working our way up, up and around with the feathers, and then we'll do that little head last. So that's going to be our approach today. And I started by um, attaching the first row of ruffles here at the very bottom, just so that they came right to the end of the skirt, but not hung over too far. And then we're just gonna stagger them up about an inch and a half to two inches apart. Um, and we're gonna do this last one at the very top so you can see exactly how to do it. But this is the look you'll get, especially if you alternate your tool. You can all do it the same. These glitter ones are really fun. They do shed glitter, so just be aware of that. Um, but there's lightly glittered ones, there's plain ones. So we're gonna show you a couple of them. But I wanted to show you that we went ahead and did a little bit of pre-work just for time restraints yeah. today. So I'm gonna pass this back over to the overhead camera to Ashley, and she's gonna show us how to get started with our first ruffle. Perfect. There we go. All right, so very first step, you'll wanna take your big spool of tool. Um, typically, you just kinda of eyeball this part, especially since you're doing gathers. So what we like to do is we like to start on the end of our apron and go end to end with the tool. And make sure you all can see this. So see on both ends, I've got the spool of tool. And we're going to just go over one more time. So we'll have twice as much tool. The reason that we do this is because those gathers end up shrinking as you start mm -hmm. to customize them. So, so to make sure better. we have very voluminous mm -hmm. gathers yep. and ruffles, we want twice the width of our apron and tool. Correct. So that's Correct. easy. So if you'll cut me a piece, We'll just cut a nice little piece off. Awesome. And I'm going to take this piece and head over to the sewing machine and let you hold onto the apron for a minute. Okay, so at the sewing machine, I um, am going to take this piece of tool. Now, we used six inch wide tool ribbon. You can use wider. Um, it means that you wouldn't need to have as many rows of ruffles, but we use the six inch and we're going to fold it in half, giving us a three inch wide um, piece of tool. And you're going to kind of Fold that all the way down. You can choose to pin or clip this, but honestly, it's pretty easy to just kind of guide it through. It's totally up to you now. This is really thin. I am using the same color thread today just so you all can see everything that um, I stitch. Um, we're using the, the brightest pink um, thread today. And the first step we're going to do is just place our tool under our foot. And we're going to kind of follow along this outside edge. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. I'm going to follow along this outside edge and we're going to sew where our um, two edges meet up and we'll just kind of uh, go all the way down. Now I will say what we're doing here is a basting stitch. It's a wide stitch. So we're going to adjust our machine here. I'm going to change it to the widest length. Let me zoom back out real quick. So you can see I am sewing on the Singer Heavy Duty 4452. This machine is available at Michaels and Michaels.com along with the other machines we have in the background. Um, but I chose this one today because we are doing a lot of 
interesting materials. Yep. Um, do you need a heavy duty to do this project? No, uh, but you do need to make sure that you um, have the right foot. We're using an all-purpose foot today, um, and I do have a, a slightly heavier universal needle in place. I think it's I have been 80 or 90 in place. I can't remember what exactly I put in there, but you don't need a denim needle or anything heavy like that. So pretty straightforward, but we're going to change our length on this machine to as far as it will go, the longest stitch length. This machine goes to four. Some machines go up to five or even further, and we're going to make sure we're on a straight stitch. We're not ready for the zigzag just yet. We're going to do a straight stitch. And we also, with a basting stitch, do not want to back stitch at the beginning and end. We're not securing the stitch. Right. We're going to be using it and pulling the stitch to create our gathers, which Ashley's going to show you in a second. And since we're pulling these um, stitches, we have to have a long tail as well, right? Exactly. I'm glad you mentioned that. We want to have a little extra on um, both ends. I'm going to lower this just a little bit so you guys can see better. There we go. When I zoom in, it little off, there we go. So we're gonna just kind of sew along here. There's my little foot down here, my pedal. All right. Always hold your threads when you get started. And we're gonna just keep this in line and she all the way through. Yes. And take your time. This is not something to rush. Yeah. Now there are other ways to create a gather. I'm just doing one row of a basting stitch because it's tool, it's pretty tough. Um, and I have really good thread. Um, if I had like a not as great thread or an older thread or something and it, it tears or breaks easily, and you might want to do two rows of this basting stitch to get a more secure gather. Um, if you're using um, something more delicate like a lace or different kind of fabric, you might want to do the two rows of basting instead of just the one. And you're using all purpose. Right? I am. I am. And I'm loving this hot pink color today. I'm a big fan of pink, so. If you can't tell, we do love pink. <laughs> we, we went all pink today. we go. We're just going to go right off the end. There we go. And we'll bring our needle up and lift our foot and we're going to stretch that out and then use our little thread cutter on the side. And you can see I have a nice basting stitch all the way across. And this is double the width of our apron. And then um, Ashley is going to go back over to the overhead camera real quick. And I know I just sewed it on a plain um, tool. So, so you can see the stitch, but we already have one that's glittered. This is going to actually be our final row, this glittery. We wanted to show you the glittery fun one yes. um, with the gather. It shows up a little bit better. And she's going to show you how to gather this. Yes. And like Bethany said, this is just one way to gather. Um, so we're actually going to do it the handy way. It's important to mention to you that when you're gathering, you want to pull your bottom or bobbin yes. <laughs> thread when you're gathering. So we'll start here on the left. And all you're going to do is take that single bottom thread and you're just going to pull it really gently. You want to make sure that you're not pulling too hard. What can happen is you can snap your thread yeah. and you'll just have to make a new strip. So a little cheat sheet idea that we like to do is I like to gather from either end and meet in the middle. It's just a little bit easier for us to adjust or customize the gathers um, as we continue to gather. As you can see here, it's all covered. You just kind of have to play with it, right? And and you, work just, with it. you just work through it until it's exactly where you want it to be. So we'll gather all the way through the middle, at least on the right side, my right. And then we'll repeat the same step on the left again. I'm pulling the bottom thread very, very gently, like so. Just until we move it to the middle. Now, another way to do a gather, I mentioned the double row of basting strips instead of just the one like we did here. You can also um, do a get a piece of cording. Mm -hmm. That's really strong, stronger than a thread. And you're going to sew a zigzag stitch over the cording and then pull the cording um, to get that gather. 
together. So that's something we've done in the past as an example. And this is something that you could do here too. We chose to just do the single because we're doing so many rows of ruffles. Correct. And from here, we're going to lay it on the apron. Now it's important that you want your gathers to be almost just right. They don't have to be perfect mm -hmm. at this step. What, what you'll want to do, this is when these clips come in handy, you'll want to take the end of your tool, make sure there's a little bit um, left over, just enough for you to tuck a really pretty um, end. Finish. And you want to make sure that the end of this is going to cover this top seam on here. And this is where that ruler comes into, or the tape measure comes into place. You can measure up an inch and a half to two mm -hmm. inches, or you can eyeball it. Um, but you want to make sure that it's straight and even on both sides. Correct. So we will just quickly work on either end first. And we'll want to line it up as fast as we can. We'll repeat this step on the side and take another clip. And, and we just in. fold it over the edge, right? Yep. That's so all it that we just do. makes a nice little tuck behind. Correct. And from here, if you feel like you've clipped a little bit too tight, the way you could tell is that your edges are kind of curling up like this. You can always just gently pull, make your apron kind of taut, I guess. We want it to lay flat. We don't want exactly. it to curl in when we're done. <laughs> exactly. So from here, um, you can take this time to kind of mess a little bit more with your gathers. Make sure you have them exactly where you want them. When you do, you will just pin them in place. So I like to start from the middle. It just feels right. Yeah, <laughs> when you get the way. center part in place. Um, and from there, I usually do one in the middle and then two on either side. So we will pin our gathers in place like so. And just a reminder too, before Bethany starts sewing over this part, um, never sew over your pins. No, That's please don't. No, no. I know we don't really talk about that, but that can damage your machine and maybe your stitches as well. So remember yes. to take them out when you're sewing. So I will take the apron, we'll head back over to the sewing machine. And if you don't mind, Ashley, if you could hand me a clip, an extra clip, I wanna show them real quick. We have these side straps that go around the waist. Um, it's really easy for these to kind of end up because they're so skinny to end up behind your um, skirt here and learn from my mistake. I have accidentally sewn this onto the back before and that's not what we want to do. So I decided to, after I learned from my mistake, to take my side straps and clip them to the top of the neck strap. It just kind of helps keep them out of the way while you're building up your skirt. So, um, and you just clip them and they're all together and you don't have to worry about it. It's easier to find them. All right, so now we're gonna come back to this machine here and we're gonna sew this on. I actually really like, I don't know, I like to go this way. I like to have um, that, be able to hold the tool down with my right hand because I'm right-handed, but obviously I need to get all of this through here, and that's a little challenging, but I'll show you what I do. Let me get that untangled. Um, I'm going to just roll, <laughs> roll it up. You're not going to mess up your tool. It's very forgiving. And now this is going to fit through my machine really easily. Um, so let's get back in here. Now I am going to adjust my stitch. You know, we had it on the basting stitch. We want to actually really get this secure so it doesn't come off. So instead of having a stitch length of four, we're going to change it down to about two and a half to three, it's totally your preference. It's all the change that we're gonna do here. And I'm gonna take that first clip off and stick it right under my foot. Now I am lining my needle up with my basting stitch. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys so you can see. I am lining my needle up with my basting stitch and I'm gonna do my very best. I mean, it's hard with tool and ruffles, but I'm gonna do my very best to follow this basting stitch all the way across. Um, and then be sure to stop at my pins. Let's drop my needle real quick. Are you back stitching at this point? Absolutely. Yeah. We want this to be secure. We're not gathering anymore. We want this to stay in place. We are a big fan of the back stitch. So I'm going to do a couple of those. Just push this little button down and it does our little back stitch and then we're off to the races. So straight across here. I'm a little close to it. There we go. And you're gonna have to kind of take your time with this, especially working with tool. And I'm approaching a pin, so I'm gonna 
pull it out and stick it in my pin cushion. So don't lose it. And I noticed that you're adjusting the gathers a little bit as you go. Yeah. Is that just to keep them even? It is. Yeah. I, you know, when you're approaching a gather, your foot's going to want to push that up a little bit. So you are going to have to kind of take your time and hold that gather down so it goes, instead of going over the foot right here, it's going to go under. under the foot and I'm holding that down. So if you see my left hand in there a little bit, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to hold it down um, so we get a nice even stitch all the way across. So you see how this is like going here? Let me zoom out real quick. See how this is feeding through because I rolled it up like a little sausage. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. This doesn't take too long. Now I will say what I did that helped me expedite the project is I basted all of my strips, mm -hmm. then I gathered all of my strips, and then I clipped, pinned them on one at a time and sewed them one at a time. But I went ahead and had all of them cut and, um, and gathered and everything before I started doing this, so. The prep can make the project. It does it help expedite can. it, yeah. Right. So you're not alternating what you're right. doing. Right. Now these glitter ones, these <laughs> glitter tools do tend to shed a little bit. I'm giving you fair warning, but they are totally worth it because it adds that extra sparkle and makes it so much fun. Agreed. Agreed. And like I said, you can do that this with just about any color. Mm -hmm. um, and we come up with a lot of really fun alternative ideas too. You could be a like, peacock if you wanted yeah. to. <laughs> Some other characters right. and designs. I guess they could totally make a lion with this type yep. um, design. We got a last little back stitch and we are done. Let me zoom back out. I can show you all what I'm doing. I'm gonna lift my foot. And we'll pull it back around and there we go. We have sewn that straight across and you can see my darker stitching <laughs> on there. Um, and so what we're gonna do next is, we'll kind of look for this here. We're gonna just trim our threads on the ends. Just clean it up a little bit. We have a suggestion of swans. Oh, Ooh, swans would what be a good fantastic. Idea. All right, y'all need to drop more chat ideas in the chat. We love hearing your creative mm -hmm. ideas. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like this would be like a really, like we said, a cute mommy and me project. Absolutely. So let's see what else we can come up with while we're, while we're sewing today. I think I got them all off. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to pass this back over to Ashley and we're going to do our ruffled ribbon. Yes. So we'll go back to that overhead camera. Perfect. Thank you, Ash. Okay. And like we mentioned, we were going over the supplies that you need. This is just a fun for, for us to have. Um, this also is, acts as a really nice cover up to the top of our gathers here. So it just gives us such a nice polished, it finished, it professional look to this costume. Because <laughs> yeah. we're going to be professionals today and we're going to make it look our best. So. Agreed. And if you wanted to, too, you all could add some decorative stitching in different colors. We do advise that if you're going to do that, just do this on the ribbon first yes. before you add it to yes. your apron. Yes. It's just a lot easier that it way. It does make it easier. But um, what we've done, we've already pre-cut this piece of ribbon, but it's going to be about the same length as the tool, except we're not doubling over right. since we're not gathering this. So ribbon. it's just the width of right. the apron once over, plus a little extra. Yep. So we can wrap it around the back. Right. Just exactly. Like we did the, exactly. And you want to make sure that the center, um, that this seam right here goes along the center of the ribbon. Because what we're going to do is we're going to sew it twice. We're going to sew it along this ruffle and we're going to sew it along this ruffle. We will really want to make sure it's covering that up. So as much as we can get that over it, the better. And then you just clip it on and we're going to pin it in place. There we are. And again, you want to make sure that your apron isn't <coughs> curling on the side either. You don't want to pin or clip too tight rather. So once we've got our clips, now we pin. I'll pass the pins. So yeah, I took them from you. <laughs> Y'all know I like to start in the middle, so we'll start in the middle of our ribbon here, and just pin. And then again, we'll go on either side like we did for our ruffle. So the center of the right side first, and then the center of the left side second, just like so. And now we sew it. And now we sew. So we're going back to the machine again. I know we're doing a lot of back and forth. All right, so we've got it in place. And again, we're gonna sew this 
twice. So we're gonna sew down this seam right here where the ruffle meets the flat part of the ribbon. And then we're gonna do the other side as well. So we're gonna do both to make sure it's in place. I always like to start with the part that's overlapping the tool where it's hiding. So we make sure we stay completely covered on that side and then we'll do that one first, second. So we can go either way. We'll go this way this time. And we're back stitching for this part Absolutely. Too, right? We're securing this in place. So we wanna make sure it is down for good. And I think this is where having a ruffled ribbon kind of helps because you do have that seam. It's a guide. It is. Yep, you have that guide to, to help keep you straight as your so was. I'm going to get my little foot control. Do we have any questions? Or comments. Or, comments or one other of, ideas? One of, one of our um, folks who are watching is from Florida and says this is perfect and it's going to be a big hit there. And we said, yeah, it's not just for Halloween. You could use it for party party. Flamingos are like the mascot of yes. Florida. Yeah, I used to live in Florida. Yeah. So I used to live in Orlando and I loved that people had flamingo decorations. I mean, like, so everywhere. Fun. So, so, so fun. It must be the state bird. I don't know if it is or not, but I feel like it should be if it's not. <laughs> it is such a fun concept. It's my yeah. favorite part of going to the zoo. <laughs> See, it's the flamingo. <laughs> so when you presented me with some, a flamingo costume idea, because I just, I'm not a big scary person. Like I don't mm -hmm. do like the spooky, scary Halloween. I do like the fun, friendly Halloween. Um, so when you said, oh, let's do like a flamingo costume, I was all about that. <laughs> this was such a great idea. We are always coming up with some pretty out of the box ideas, but we really like this one because of the versatility. You can yes. take it on, you can take it off. You don't have to fully commit unless you want to. We do appreciate the commitment though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, I feel like you could make a really fun little headpiece to go with this yes, with the leftover yes. like feather boa and tool on like yeah. a headband. How easy and cute would that be? And I will say heavy duty machines are really, really good for pieces like a headband, especially if you're mm -hmm. working with something that's a little bit more unconventional or something with a little bit more structure. A heavy right. duty machine is a really good one. So we went across the bottom one and it's covering our seam allowance at the top of our tool and I'm just going to do the same thing do that clip. and I'm going to do the same thing going across it again following this side so let's do it one more time one more pass any other ideas of like what we should what other I um characters we could do yeah I feel like this would like make a really cute like big bird or yes. <laughs> you know like just I was big bird for Halloween when I was little. <laughs> I was obsessed. <laughs> obsessed you know, you could almost go as a family zoo if you want. Oh, that would be so cute. You know? Like different animals yeah. for the zoo or yeah. for a circus. Yeah, for a little safari costume, that would be fun. I do love this project, though. I think it might be my favorite Halloween project so far. Right. You see that I am continuing, I'll zoom in a little bit um, so you guys can see a little better here, but I am holding down my ruffles here. Um, they do kind of want to catch um, on the front of the foot, but you see how this foot curls up? It does make a big difference um, when using the tool and the ruffles. So we'll just keep going across. Remember to remove our pins. We do not want to sew over our pins. How you break a needle. Speaking of needles, I'm just like I said earlier, we're using a universal needle, but we need to make sure that we're always changing our needles every eight to 10 hours yep. of sewing. Yep. A good needle will definitely make or break <laughs> in a, a project's success. Absolutely. Um, for sure. Yes, so we'll kind of trim that. I missed it. There we go. I'm going to pull this back through. I'm getting I'm caught. Help there me out go. there. I'm getting caught. I've got straps on everything. Sorry, I zoomed way in. One of these days, I'm going to get this zoom. Here, I'm going to show them real quick what I did. <laughs> so we've got our ruffles straight across there. And I'm going to clip our threads just so we have a nice finished look. In the front and the back, get all of them. Not clip my straps over here. There we go. Looking good. 
Now, next, now that we are done with our skirt, we are going to get into the feathers. Like I said, we're going to work our way up this project. Um, remember how I had pinned the side straps to the neck strap? We're going to undo that now because we are, need the side straps to the side. Um, and we're going to work our way up this apron with the feather bow. So I'm going to pass this back to my assistant, Thank Ashley, who's doing Thank a wonderful job. All, All right. right. So we're so, going to go from glitter to feathers. You ready? Holy holy. holy. <laughs> okay. So feathered frenzy right now. <laughs> All we right. We got to commit so, to it. Let's do it. Let's All talk right. through uh, sewing. To fall off a little bit, but there's so many on here you're not going to notice. Right. Um, I didn't know this about feather boas. I've just never really looked at them closely, mm -hmm. but they're on a rope. Yes, they are. So the feathers are attached to a soft rope. Right. Now, where's our other end? So this go. is what it looks like on the end right here. Let's see if we can get that in there. There you go. See how it's like a loop? And it's a soft rope. It's kind of fraying apart here. Um, you can untie this or you can just cut this knot off, but we don't need that knot. We're not hanging it from anything and we don't want it on our apron. Agreed. So we cut this end off. You can wrap some tape around that. You can do a little fray check. You can leave it as is. It should be just fine. And we're going to use this end to start with our apron. Starting on our apron. Now let's show everybody this apron real quick before we put the feathers on so they can kind of get a lay of the land. We're going to start here. Um, this is when you're wearing it, it will be on the right side. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come up the right arm and up, let's scoot down a little bit, and up the right neck. And we're going to go all the way around the neck. Whoop, there we go. To this side, and we're going to stop right here. So we're going to go up this side all the way around and stop right here. Uh, we're not going to go down this side. We're going to put our head right here. And so we're going to stop right here. But uh, Ashley, how are we going to clip these on? So I think we're using the clips again, right? We are using the clips. You may them a feather boa if you'd like. <laughs> it's not impossible, but it's a little tricky. Um, so we just decided to use good old fashioned clips here. So what we'll do is we'll take the end of our boa that we cut because mm -hmm. we're going fast and loose. Um, <laughs> But we'll just clip the very end here. As you can see, um, I make sure there's enough feather covering up that rope part. So we'll start here in the very corner. And then we'll just sew all the way up. I want to clip it a few places mm -hmm. around. You don't have to clip it too often um, because where she's clipping it is where I'm going to tack it. I would recommend clipping, clipping up here, right where this meets up. And don't pull it too hard. You want to have some flow with your feathers. Exactly. <laughs> So this is really just to hold it in place. Um, so like we said, you don't have to pin or clip every single piece of this boa, just enough to make sure that um, it's laying in the right way that you'd like it to. And on this strap, because our strap is pretty thin, we want to make sure that this strap and the rope are going to be clipped together, not feathers. Because we want to, um, when we're going to sew this on, and we are going to sew this on, <laughs> um, we are going to do a little tacking method. And um, we want to make sure that we tack through, let's hold it over. There we go. Um, tack through the strap and the rope so it doesn't come undone and it stays put. Correct. So we'll just follow that same instruction all the way around the strap. Make sure, like we said, that you're clipping the rope as much as you can. Mm -hmm. More than Take your time. Feather. Right. Move the feathers from one side to the other out of the way. Right, right. We'll Again, we'll want to clip on the corner too. Um, and then with this piece, don't cut the rest of your boa off just yet. Yeah. You will need that later on. Right now, we're just clipping. And don't cut your tail off yet. We are going to use a little bit more of it to finish it off. So just hold on to that and we'll just kind of keep it out of the way. Okay. So now I'm going to tack this together. We'll go back to the machine. Every time we come to the machine, I get more stuff I have to stick under it. It's a frenzy. It's a craft frenzy. They're, they're falling from the sky. All right. So for the tacking, I don't know if you've ever used tacking um, as a method. It's kind of the same settings as for a buttonhole. Um, so on this machine here, I'm going to change it to a zigzag stitch. Um, my length is going to be zero or as low as it'll go. 
Um, the reason is I don't want to feed it through. I just want to zigzag back and forth in one place. And then my width here, I'm going to do about a three. Um, you could do wider, but you want to make sure that your needle is going to go through the rope and the apron, not just the apron. You want to get it to go through part of the rope. That's what's really going to secure it in place. Um, and then we're going to just, this is, I'm going to zoom in, but I don't know how much you'll be able to see up close. Um, but here you see, I can move the feathers aside and see the rope. You want to take the time to move those feathers out of the way before you stick, before you stick this up under your foot. And what's really nice about our Singer machines is they have this extra lift. Let me zoom in real quick. I know my hand's kind of here in the way, but you see how I have the foot lifted already, but I can lift it even a little more. That really comes in handy when trying to get thicker things underneath. Am I lifting that for me a little bit? The, the foot a oh, little sorry. extra? Perfect. I'm just trying to get that first one started. Sometimes an extra hand. This is why I like to sew with friends. <laughs> it really comes in handy. So now I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to start my tack. Now we're just going to zigzag back and forth. And I kind of do the first ones with the hand wheel. And I know it's going to be a little tricky to see here, guys, but just bear with me. You don't need to do it a ton. Just a few stitches. We're going to pull that out. And see what I did? I missed the apron. This is why it's so important to make sure the apron is up under your rope. And that was my bad. Like I said, take your time, get it all the way under there. Thank you for the assistance. <laughs> all the way down, perfect. We'll try that again. Like I said, these feathers do create a little bit of a challenge. But they're so worth it. They are so worth it. It completes the flamingo look. All right, that time I got the apron, I feel it. See how I tacked it right there? And it's tacked on this side right here. And when I fluff it, you can't even see it. it. It these feathers are very forgiving and will hide it. So I'm going to continue to work my way around tacking this on. And while I do that, we can go back to the overhead or the main camera. We do the main one, Ash. I'm sorry, we're switching it up on you, <laughs> <laughs> where you can see both of us. I think it says Bethany on it. There we go. There it is. All right. Okay. So I'm going to continue to sew and tack. And I thought you guys might want to see me mess with feathers. <laughs> <laughs> and while I do that, um, Ashley, as I mentioned earlier, is like the queen of upcycling. And we're upcycling mm -hmm. an apron to be something even more fabulous. And she has done some other projects and she's brought them with us, with her today. And she's gonna show you how we're kind of taking the same concept mm -hmm. and applied it to other things she's made. So I'm gonna let her share her works of art with you. <laughs> yes, now I can't take credit for everything I'm going to show you all. We have some really awesome people here on our team that also help sew things. But up first will be something I made myself. Um, you all remember that upcycling is all about taking something that you already have at home and just either remaking it, adding something really great to it. So the first piece that I'd like to show you all is a denim jacket um, It's combined with a blazer. It's really trendy right now. Most times we use a sweatshirt underneath, but I know a lot of us are still working from home or coming into the office. So if you still want to be a little bit casual, but not all the way buttoned up, this is a really good look. Um, we just took this denim jacket that was in my closet, one of like 17. <laughs> this was the one I wasn't wearing um, on a regular basis and just combining it with a blazer. On this note, though, I want to mention that when you're sewing with denim, at least for a project with this one, it really helps to have specialty presser feet. Um, so some, for something like this, when working with a really thick fabric or even with piling fabrics, we like to sew with presser feet mm -hmm. that have an extra set of feed dogs on the bottom. So for us, that would be an even feed foot. I'm sure um, we have other ones as well, but making sure you have a little extra help just to help your machine um, feed the fabric through all the way. Another really great upcycling project, another denim one, is this denim and leather tote bag that we've made using a pair of jeans 
a bandana and just upcycling a leather bag that we had at home. This is from one of our really awesome team members here. And you'll see here, can we go to the overhead view so we can get a close up of these decorative stitches? You'll see here um, that there are a lot of different stitches, uh, gorgeous, right? I do want to mention though that when you're sewing on leather, at least if it's a, a decorative stitch and um, as long as it's leather on top of a different fabric, ideally, you are going to need a special presser foot for this as well. So we have two here. This is an example. The first one, this is our roller foot. I don't know that you all can see this, but it's almost like little Hot Wheels for sewing. I love that <laughs> reference. Um, but this just glides across the fabric very, very easily. You won't have any hiccups. It's also important to mention too that when you're sewing on leather, you want it to be the first and only time that you're sewing most times. It's really hard to take seams out of leather and still have it look nice and finished. Another alternative is this non-stick foot. Even though it doesn't roll, it does have this really nice, clean, smooth finish. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, non-stick, doesn't stick on anything. This is also a really great alternative presser foot. If you're doing decorative stitching on leather, that is ideally on top of another fabric. And then lastly, for all of you festive fans out there, this is a really great project for the whole family. This is a fall leaf or Thanksgiving leaf table runner. This is a, a project that we did upcycling scrap fabric. So I know a lot of times when we're sewing things, we have a lot of leftover pieces that we don't necessarily want to part with. Maybe they're too big and we can make something else out of them. This is a really great project. All we've done is we've cut out different shaped leaves. Um, a lot of them are actually the same leaf, just in different sizes. Sometimes it's a little easier for people that are cutting it. Um, we might use a spray adhesive or a heat and bond, so the kind that you would use your iron for, to press all of these really pretty leaves together. And then I also want to show you all the seams on top. Now this is kind of where it's fun for the whole family. You'll notice that the stitches aren't perfect for every single leaf. We just felt like it added a little bit more character. So um, we used a different color, it's kind of metallic thread. I don't know if you all can see the shine here, but just to give your leaves a little something different. So you can always use this while you're serving dinner or Maybe if you're just someone who's really into home decorating for the holidays. I love those. <laughs> I love that they did like different fabrics on each mm -hmm. side. So it's like reversible. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And this is a project that we've had for a while. Notice how fresh it still looks. This is when pressing. It's really, just really ironed important. it. <laughs> I just ironed it. We pull this out just about every year. It's, it's a singer favorite for us as well, but this is some more inspiration for scrap sewing as well. What is everyone's favorite upcycling projects? Has anyone been upcycling at all? I want to know if um, we have any ideas for some um, upcycling projects that people have done. Yes, yes. Please share. Please share. And I am working through our tax over here. Um, I will tell you, I struggling a little bit, and I want to be honest about that. What I'm struggling with is the um, finding my thread to hold it down. It yeah. keep, my needle keeps coming unthreaded because of that. And that's just, so I've learned, you know, I need a little bit longer tail of my thread to hold it in place. Uh, it's hard to find it under all of um, these feathers, but you wanna make sure you hold that thread before you start stitching so it doesn't come out of the needle. There we go. So I'm tacking, I think I have one more little tack to do. If we work our way around. Perfect, perfect. And Considering I had to here. redo my needle a couple of times, it's totally mm -hmm. taking me a minute longer. But like I said, you wanna make sure you get the feathers out of, out of the way. You wanna make sure you hold your threads. Right. And, you know, I, I think this is such a fun project. And if this is really the only piece we need to take our time yes. to kind of get through it, we're making really good time. We are doing really yeah. well. Yeah. All right. So I have it tacked on. Oh, you see those feathers flying around? 
And then this is our tail. We're not using this just yet. We're gonna hold on to it. We're not gonna trim it just yet, but I did tack on all the way up and over. Um, and I need to trim our threads, but for time's sake, I'm not going to write the second, but it is attached to our apron. So I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a break from the feathers and the glitter, and we're gonna go back to the overhead camera and we're gonna make our little flamingo face. So we have our pattern. Perfect. So um, I just wanted to explain, I, when I drew this pattern, I put these little dotted lines in here um, and that's because I cut different color felts. And so what you'll see here is I cut the whole head and the main pink part. And then I cut the pink, white pink in this whole section. And then I trimmed it and I cut just the little black feet part. So you end up with three layers of felt here on the end. This makes it sturdier yeah. um, and it's just easier. So when you go to cut this out, cut the whole thing out, because you're gonna cut one whole piece of felt out of that. Mm -hmm. And then you'll trim it here and cut one whole piece of light pink out of that. And you'll trim it one more time and just the black. And then we did the black glitter felt for the eyelashes. And you can make your own eyelashes. You can choose to do an actual eye. Um, you can really get creative. Um, and yeah, so there we go. And you see, I didn't do the whole neck. Yes. Um, I had the whole neck and then we put, held it up to the apron and I chose to trim it a little shorter. So it's set kind of in the middle of the apron. So depending on your apron, that's why I gave a bigger piece here is so you can make it longer. Depending on your apron, you can make it a little smaller. You can also size this down before you print it for a kid's apron. Yeah. So mm -hmm. lots of adjustability here, but this is what we came up with. Now, how did we get these pieces put together? That was my question. <laughs> I noticed this wasn't sewn yet. It's not sewn we yet. Used yet. Adhesive, we used right? a basing adhesive, We did. Yeah. We did. If you yeah. were in our class last week, we talked about this um, when we were making our little animal mask. Uh, when working with felt in these small pieces, you want to hold, make sure that they stay secure um, before you start to sew. Now you can easily pin these, mm -hmm. but this basing adhesive, I picked it yes. up at Michael's. <laughs> it's so easy and you don't have to pin anything mm -hmm. and you know it's not going to shift on you. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, as I mentioned you know, earlier, this um, is an aerosol spray. So if you have any allergies to anything like this, yeah. do not use it. Just use pins and clips. It's going to be much safer um, for you if you have those sensitivities. Mm -hmm. But when using this adhesive, and, and there's a reason I already did it. I, I did it outside. Um, <laughs> we didn't want to do it in the studio. You want to make sure it's in a well-ventilated yes. area. Um, make sure you even have gloves on. I, mm -hmm. I kind of messed up my manicure earlier. Um, it's getting a little glue on there. But make sure you also have some sort of piece of paper or cardboard or something under um, before you spray because it does kind of go everywhere and protect your surface that you're, you're spraying on. Um, but you just spray the back of the pieces and you stick them right on. Now, this isn't a permanent hold. It's a temporary hold. Right to know. So we're still going to sew them together. So mm -hmm. if you want to lift that, you can show them. It will come right up. So if you were to stick it on and go, oh, I don't want it right there, you can pull it off just reposition it and stick it back down. Pretty easy. Right. Now, the other thing is once you um, put all of these on top of each other, if you realize, okay, well, this part's a little wider. I really want this to be more curved instead of a point. Just get your fabric scissors and we'll just trim and make it even all the way around. So you can really play with this a lot. Mm -hmm. So any questions about the little, putting the flamingo head together, piecing that together? Nope, but we got a good hungry caterpillar costume with t-shirts from the closet. Oh, that would be amazing. I love that. And you said with t-shirts? That's clever. That is yeah. really cute. Yeah. I think you could totally make this whole costume on a t-shirt instead sure. of just an apron. For sure. Um, and they sell every color t-shirt <laughs> at, at Michael's. They really do. That's what we're wearing today is some yeah. Michael shirts. Yeah. Um, so you'll see here, I already did another one. And this one I went ahead and sewed around here. Actually, I'm gonna to come to the sewing machine camera if you don't mind, Ash, um, so they can get a really good angle of this. Here we go. So you see my little face. Um, I sewed around the beak. I know it's gonna be hard to see in the black, but there's glitter everywhere. Um, but I just sewed around the edge. I did that one first. You can see it from the back. 
And then I did a matching light pink thread and I sewed around this part of the beak. And you can see that from the back. So we're sewing all of our pieces together. This is this sewing and stitching, it's decorative, but it also hold, helps it hold the space shape. It's not gonna get flimsy, okay? And then this piece right here, we're gonna sew onto the um, apron, but you can see I also sewed on the eyelashes. I did a little zigzag stitch and I followed that arch. You can just do a straight stitch. I did not stitch down each little lash. Um, it's not necessary, we did stick it down, but even if you didn't, it's kind of cute if they stick up and look a little three-dimensional. So that's really fun. But I just did a little, little zigzag stitch right there. And now we are ready to attach this to our apron. So I'm gonna hand you the apron. We'll go back to the overhead, get it all. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So we need to stick this on. And um, I will tell you when I did the one that I did the first time, mm -hmm. I did use a little bit of the spray adhesive on the back and to hold it in place on the front of my apron. Um, we're not spraying that in the studio Correct. today. So I'm going to let you show them how to pin it in place, sure. if you don't mind. So this is really up to your discretion as far as where you like the head of your flamingo or animal to be. What we prefer to do, which we thought was a little bit neater, we decided to line it up here first, kind of corner to corner. And so underneath here, you'll see that's more our strap than the rest of the apron needs. And then from there, we can tilt it a little bit. Maybe, you know, you want your, your front a little close to your heart. It's up to you. Um, but we usually start here in this corner. I will tilt it just because I think it looks really fun that way. And you do want to make sure that, because we are going to sew around this, mm -hmm. that it is all on the apron though. Mm -hmm. So that's really important to make sure we get it secured down really well. I sure will. There you go. And we just choose to pin this one instead of flipping, especially since we'll be sewing and then removing the pin as you go. So. We'll just sew at uh, the very top. We know we want our flamingo head to start. And then we do two more. Y'all know I start in the middle. <laughs> so we will run one here. And then just to make sure the beak isn't flying, everyone, we'll just make sure the beak is pinned down and not going. That's going to be a little tougher just because we've got three layers of felt there. But it's very important to make sure you hold it all down. Maybe we'll do one more right there. Yeah. All right, so this is our last step, almost. Almost. We're, so Remember, we're still going to have our little tail over here. We're not going to cut that off just yet. And I'm going to go back to the machine and we're going to sew around our little flamingo hat. So we'll pass that over. over, up and over. Ooh, passing a lot. Okay, so, so we're going to sew. I'm going to start at this top corner and go all the way around um, and I'm going to do a straight stitch. I've got it back to my straight stitch over here, uh, two and a half uh, to three millimeter length. Um, we're just going to do a little decorative stitch across the top and I'm using that same hot pink. You're going to have to watch these feathers. I will say they are going to um, Try to get in your way, but we're going to go and follow pretty close to the edge here. We're doing a decorative stitch, so we want it to be pretty close to um, the edge of our felt. And we are going to it pulled my feathers in. I knew it would while I was holding my back stitch button. That's okay. Just keep going. I will say, I think this is when having a different covered belt is really helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One that's at least slightly different, just different enough, where it's a little easier for you to be able to guide yourself around your flamingo head. And I know I'm kind of holding my hands here, but I'm trying to hold this in place. Um, we're just following along the edge. This um, is just decorative, but it's also whole attaching this in place. So you want to make sure that you uh, are getting a nice, even, Take your time, drop your needle, lift your foot, pivot your fabric around curves. Um, you want this to go on really well and look really nice and finished. We didn't do all of these ruffles and all of these feathers <laughs> for it to not look finished. We want to make sure we get our pins out of the way. 
in there. I will say, I think my little stuff is underneath here. We're out of the way. Okay, I wanna make sure your straps are not in the way. It's a lot to kind of keep up with at the very end, but we're gonna get through this. And remember, I gotta get all of this. I'm gonna zoom out. We gotta get all of this through here. So I'm gonna do that roll. roll. Actually, I'm gonna pass through the feather boa <laughs> to you, okay? <laughs> and we're gonna roll this up out of the way. And we'll put our foot back down. And just keep working our way around. So for, to for today's time's sake, I'm not gonna go all the way around because I can do that later. I'm just gonna go across the little bead here um, to make it easier. Sure. It will secure it in place, but you'll get the idea of what we're trying to do. Perfect. And you can see how you kind of have to. And I think this is where having that spring adhesive would help a lot too. It really does so help right. hold it in place right. as you move it all around. Mm -hmm. And if you're in a like we are, <laughs> I think it could help. If you need to stop and take a break and come right back and know that it's exactly where you left it, spray adhesive is very helpful. Needle down, and lift and pivot, lift and pivot. There we go. Almost done. We're going to move our pin out of the way. Leave that needle down. It really helps hold your place. We put our foot back down. I feel like this would make a really cute cookie monster too. Oh and you gosh. could do little yes. felt cookies. Mm -hmm. How cute mm -hmm. would those be? A little felt chocolate chip cookies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Almost there. Almost. It is lunchtime, isn't it? I know. I'm. <laughs> Feel my stomach growling, so we're gonna hurry up here, and then we're gonna come right back across the top just to secure our felt. Let's do a couple back stitches, and we are done putting this little flamingo face on. How cute is that? Now we didn't do this part. You can adhesive of that. You can stitch all the way around that. Um, but for time's sake today, we didn't do it. I actually. I like that. I kind of like that it's clapping. I mean, it's secured. You can see that we have secured it on there really well. Um, so it's not going to go anywhere. But when we hold this up, I kind of, kind of don't want just this raw edge of felt. Right. Like, looks right. like his head's just hanging. Yeah. Let's let's finish him up. So let's let's do this. I'm just going to do this over here real quick. Remember that tail that we had? Yeah. Of extra feathers. We're going to take that and just lay it right across the neck. And that tack method that we did earlier, I'm just gonna clip it. And I am going to, where are those fabric scissors we had earlier? I think you have them over there with you. Thank you. you. Yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip my tail. I just, I'm gonna get it out of the way. There we go. I'm gonna give you that so you can wear the feather boa. But, we're gonna tack this in place real quick, and then that's going to cover the neck where the felt meets the top of the apron, so you don't see that. And then we are done. Fabulous. Do we have any questions while I do that real quick? No, they, they've been following along, just going with you. Good. Good. I feel like it's not a hard project. You just have to take your time with it, because we are working with unconventional, you know, materials with this feather boa and the glitter tool and all of that, it does, does make it a little challenging in that regard. But for the most part, this is just a pretty fun, straightforward project. Sorry if you guys are getting my arm in this little camera view angle for a minute, but I wanna make sure I lift my foot up all the way, hold my threads and Tacking that in place. And there we go. I got a little string. Oh, there we go. Super cute. Yes. All right, let's go to that main camera, Ash. If you don't mind. Here we go. We made it. We made it. If you ever need to trim any of these feathers, if they're a little too long, you can. But how cute is that? Okay, here. I'm gonna try to stand up and not hit any cords, but. Whew. Oh, 
stuck to my face. <laughs> but how cute is this? Love it. Love it. All right. It. Well, now I have my costume. And you have, we can just be twins. Yeah. We have our manatee yeah. ghost shirts. Yes. I have a little extra boa, a little extra feather. But I love mm -hmm. the skirt on this. And this would be so cute for a little bra. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This is so fun. And show us. Please show us. Yes. You make your own tag us. We wrote it down too so you all can see. So we it's are. hashtag make it with Michaels, hashtag Michaels classes, and hashtag singer sewing. So be sure you tag us in your finished project. You guys had some fantastic ideas today. So we would definitely want to see what you create. Um, remember, this is recorded, so if you didn't get through the whole class um, long with us, I know we skipped ahead with, you know, time constraints, but this is recorded. It'll be on Michael's YouTube channel tomorrow afternoon and available on their website as well in about 48 hours. Um, you have the full instructions. If you ever have questions, just let us know. We're so excited that we got to do three projects yes. in October yes. with you guys. Thank you for coming and doing this. Thank you for having me. I, I can't wait ideas. to see everyone's interpretation of this. Very excited. Oh, no, look at us. We're all fancy. <laughs> We're covered in glitter and feathers, but it's so worth it. So we hope you all have a wonderful Halloween and spooky season. We will be back in November to do a class um, all about surging and using a serger um, there is a serger that is available through michael's a singer serger and we're going to be introducing you to that i love my serger i use it all the time so i'm excited to show you all kind of the basics of how to do surging so that's going to be coming up in november so stay tuned for that class and we'll see you guys next time bye see guys later thank bye. you